when you were a child, the most important thing to you was that your dad looked at you in the eye and said, son, I love you. I'm proud of you. Like you're my boy. And that's all we need. And yet it didn't happen. Dad went away. Dad went somewhere else. Dad was gone. And that answer never got answered. And you grew up wondering, why not? What was wrong with me? And most men don't realize this is like, you're 30, you're 40, you're 50, you're 60, and you're still trying to answer that damn question. And no matter what you do, it doesn't answer itself. How is it going, ladies and gentlemen? This is Sean Barnes. I want to welcome you back to The Way of the Wolf. Our guest today, Pete Vanderveen, has been on the show a few times before, and we have danced around a topic that, quite frankly, I haven't been ready to jump into. And Pete has been nudging and encouraging us to jump on and start talking through this topic. And so for those of you who haven't seen the previous shows where we've touched on it, there was a comment that was made on the first show that Pete came on where he said, when you heal the boy, the man can emerge. That stuck with me and has continued to stick with me. And this is something that Pete does a lot in terms of helping men work through these challenges Pete, I am a little bit excited, a little bit nervous to see how this show unfolds, but welcome back to The Way of the Wolf. Thanks, brother. It's great to be here. It's great to see you. I'm excited. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get real vulnerable real quick on this show to set the stage. <clears throat> Something that I have not really openly spoken about. Huh. <clears throat> okay. So whenever I was about three or four, my biological father disappeared. Nobody knew where he was. My mom, his family, he just bounced out completely. So it was just mom and Nini and Poppy and I for quite a few years. And then whenever I was about 10 or 11, my mom ended up marrying her high school sweetheart, a man named Lamar Barnes, who ended up stepping in the role of that father figure. And I've had this, I don't know if you would say chip on my shoulder, but I've always been intrinsically driven to succeed and to climb that corporate ladder and accomplish big things. And I thought it was just kind of who I was. And when Pete came on the first episode and made that comment, it kind of cut. And I started evaluating and thinking, okay, what's what's going on here? And then I had another coffee meeting with a friend of mine who made some other comments that made me realize that there's something deeper there that I have to work on. And so I have started working through that. But Pete, I would like your perspective on this entire topic. I know it's something that's very near and dear to your heart. I'd like to see how has this impacted you as a man, as a father, in your career and all of your businesses, can you open up and share a little bit about your experiences and what you have seen over the years? Yeah, I'd love to. And, and thanks for the opportunity, Sean. I know this is this is always that place. I always I always refer to most men as like you get the ninety eight percent version of said name, and because there's we all live in a quiet desperation to conceal the parts we don't want to show the world. But yet I think that that's where the power lies. That's where beauty comes from. And if, if a man can really step into who he is rather than try to pretend he's not what he really feels or he's exposing the world to a, a superficial version of him, that's when we can come alive and that's when we can really step into our power, step into our really the calling, the cause that we have as men to be leaders. And certainly we are not called to... You know, lots of wise scholars, whether it's Jordan Peterson or anyone, or even biblical context, like we're not called to repeat the brokenness that we grew up in. But yet, in order for us to stop repeating brokenness, we have to really double back and find out where we went wrong, where things went wrong to us, and how to heal from that, grow from that, so that we don't we don't reciprocate brokenness and pain for the people we encounter. 
So for me, it was, I didn't, I grew up on a, on a small country farm, milk and dairy cows and stuff as a kid. But, you know, my parents were, were religious people, nothing out of the norm. But as I grew up, I started to see my mom become a version of her mom. And her mom was a hateful, spiteful, bitter, angry woman. And what I didn't realize until I was a lot older is I realized that my value system became what my ecosystem told me it was. And as a child, you perception becomes reality. And you start to go through these series of events that either define you as a winner or as a loser. And I think a lot of times as a child, you don't have control over whether you're a winner or a loser. So as a man, you start to search for meaning. You start to search for validation. You start to search for who you are and what defines you. And you start to realize you're spinning your tires every day trying to find that answer. And you, you start going to... Sometimes most men, I would say, are start to search for the lowest common denominator that gives them instant answers to that question, which is financial success, vocational success, physical success, sexual, relational success, like whatever it is, it gives them an, an instant hit of dopamine where they're like, hell yeah, like I just put my name on the wall. I just got my name on, my jersey just went up. But the problem is, is we become superficial. We become we become broken in a way where we don't have a deep identity. We have an identity that has a caveat to it. So it's like in this moment, I feel success because I have a new car smell in my yard. In this moment, I feel success because I just hit, you know, a six or seven figure income bracket. I feel success right now because that woman just swiped right on me. Like whatever it is, we suddenly define our value based on that moment, that that situation we find ourselves in and a lot of men, that's what they're doing in their thirties their forties their fifties, even sixties. And yet what's happening is at that point is they're in a desperation. They're, they're emotionally in a coma because they're numbing themselves to who they really are, how they really feel. They're in chaos because they're in absolute desperation to continue to answer that question. Am I good enough? Am I valued? Am I, am I a person of significance? And, and then lastly is they're just, they're just creating complete brokenness where they go because they're becoming consumers of whatever said value they're seeking. And they're, they're exploiting everyone and everything and every opportunity to, to get what they need. It's, it's essentially, we become drug addicts to that answer of like, can I find validation today? Can I find success today? Can I feel like I'm good enough today? And I go out and I search for it and I'll take it at any cost. And if so, if you see most men, like I got it on my board here, where I got it, that men are light, men typically fall into three categories, coma, confusion, and chaos, right? They're in an emotional coma. They're confused. They're so they're, they just don't know what's missing. And then they're creating chaos because they're doing things all the wrong way. So my journey was really of, of going through sexual abuse, physical abuse, relational abuse, emotional abuse from my family of origin. And then walking into the world being like, what in the hell is wrong with me? Like, why can't I get it right? Why can't I figure this out? What's it going to take? And then also growing up with these labels that people put on me of like, you're this, you're that you'll never reach X. You'll never do Y you'll never do Z. And so when I was successful, I felt like, hell yeah, I proved them wrong. But when things went south and things didn't work out, I was, I had nothing to stand on. I had no foundation. I had nothing to significant that would give significance to my life, to my, my, my being who I was. It was like the hell with it. There's just no point to this because I'm looking for a platform to stand on. That's like, okay, I myself am a significant individual. But when that platform gets pulled away, like we've all gone through financial issues, we've all gone through vocational setbacks, we've all gone through relational setbacks. When you take most men and you remove that foundation, it's absolute destruction because suddenly their entire validation, their entire value system just disappeared. And now they got to start over. You said something that stuck with me 
<clears throat> and that is asking the question, am I good enough? And I've, in my reflection over the past few months, I've come to see my challenges and the adversity that I went through early in my life as a double-edged sword and that I was driven beyond belief to achieve great things. But the other side of that was what was pushing that, what was driving that behavior in those beliefs. And I've come to the realization that that question of, am I good enough? Why am I not good enough? That was the, the driver behind it, which was brutal for me to process through and think through. And I've come to realize that throughout my life and in my personal life with relationships and then even in business, it has driven me to achieve great things, but also kept me in situations that were not healthy for me for far too long. I think about certain jobs that I've had where I was miserable and I just stayed way, way too long. I've got to prove that I can take this new role. I've got to prove this to my team. I've got to prove this. And I've realized that I was pro trying to prove something to somebody that was never even there. And while it helped me achieve great things, I'm starting to come around to this realization of, okay, I've got to go back and work through these challenges that have pushed me to become this person so that I can find that balance in life and step into that, that next 2%. You talked about 98% and then being able to kind of heal and work through and step into that, that final 2%. And so that's something that it's, it's a process and it's taken me, Pete, many months. I think our first episode was almost a year ago. It's taken me a long time to work through this. And I know that I still have more to go on this journey. So whenever you work with some of the men that you coach and business owners and business leaders, is this something that you help them through? And, and what does that process look like? Because I would imagine you have visibility into it and can kind of pick up on some of these cues when these men that you're working with probably don't even see it in themselves. I know I didn't see it in myself until this past year, and I'm 41 years old. So do you see that? And then how do you help these guys through that? Yeah, I definitely feel like I've got a kind of a sixth sense for that type of personality. And I would, I would be as bold as to say that probably seven out of 10 men's struggle with this in some way shape or form so most men that are listening may not even identify with this but i would say the majority of us do in some shape or form and i think the two reasons are is most men it's like ah you know life wasn't that bad dad wasn't a bad guy mom wasn't a bad woman like it was it was pretty good well we're we're comparing ourselves against the person we heard on national news that ended up growing up in a dog cage behind some cellar door and what we've what society has really done is we've negated the the small broken steps that we've encountered like the small things like something so it and it can seem so in, insignificant as a man especially like you and i being in our 40s when you look back it's easy for us to to devalue the pain that we went through and say, well, you know, that was no big deal. That was no big deal. Or we try to tough it out. We try to shrug it off, but it's little things. Like I always, I always help my men realize, like I help them see that they're stuck. I help them see that there's a brokenness that's there. I help them see that there's a void that they're trying to fill. They don't even realize it, but most of them are thinking that if I just achieved you know, dot, 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 then life will be great. And most men I work with are looking for a vocational advancement. They're looking for financial success. So they're, they're like, well, if my wife would only dot, 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 then my life would be great. But the problem is if your life is a caveat, 
you've got a problem because if you if you aren't realizing that your value system is who you like who i am today is who i am i have my job is just a bonus my finances is just a bonus the relationships that you and i have that's that's a bonus to to me feeling 100 percent secure and confident in who i am and not the ego driven hypercharged toxic masculinity side of me that's looking to prove something to someone but the, the true genuine version of me that can be in a quiet room with the lights off and still feel value and still feel significant so most of the men i realize or the most of the men that i've worked with i help them realize that that they're in a desperation at basically they're in a desperation at all times and they feel like they're running faster every day on that treadmill trying to keep up but what they're doing, this fake it till you make it mantra is not working because what works today isn't good enough for tomorrow. And then tomorrow I need a bigger hit and the next day I need a bigger hit. So we move that goal post, the field gets longer. When we try to get, hit a touchdown, we need a next touchdown. We need a bigger touchdown. So we get this, this devaluation, this devalue system that's applying constantly. So we need like, it's just like we're, th that's where the desperation ensues is like, you're just, you can never get enough because basically there's a hole in the bottom of your, your bucket. It doesn't matter what you throw on the top. It's going out faster than you can put it in. Whenever I think back through my career, I, I have set five-year goals for myself. I wanted to have a manager title by the time I was 25. I wanted that six-figure salary by the time I was 30. I wanted a VP title by 35. And I accomplished all of those things like clockwork. And then, so I would set these five-year goals for myself. And once I achieved that goal for achieving a VP title, whenever I was in my mid-30s, I struggled to figure out what's next. Okay, I've done this for 15 years. I've accomplished everything I set out to do, but I still have this lack of fulfillment. There's like, something's not right here. And at the time, I was like, okay, well, I'll go for a CIO title by the time I'm 40. And But I, I didn't fully commit because, yes, that's something that, that I wanted and aspired for. Not so much anymore, but I came to this realization of how important it is to help other people. And I started to find fulfillment in that and helping others achieve success. And you and I have talked about this on some of the previous episodes and just some of our conversations about the importance of focusing on everyone around you instead of just having that that inward focus of what can what can I accomplish because it's just not very fulfilling in the long term. Yes, I achieve those things that I set out to achieve, but it just, it didn't bring fulfillment. And as I think through everything that you're sharing in this conversation and previous conversations that we've had, Pete, I don't know if in my early 30s, you and I could have had a conversation and I would have believed anything that you're saying. Because... I've also come to realize with the people that I work with and coach and mentor, I can shine a light and I can guide them down a path, but they have to walk that path. And even though I can see crystal clear where they need to go, how they need to go there, what the steps look like, it doesn't matter what I say to them, they have to walk that path. And while I can kind of nudge them one way or the other, they still have to go through it themselves. And my question is, have you experienced something similar whenever you work with these guys? Absolutely. I find the most successful clients that I've had are the ones that have realized that there's a wall they're hitting and they're realizing that something isn't working. Something has them stuck. Something has them feeling the confusion, the chaos and the coma. But yet the problem is, is, when you're still stuck in being desperate to prove to the world that you're tough enough, you're strong enough, you're determined enough, you're successful enough, you are so consumed with a, like you said, that drive, that insatiable drive. When that is running the steering the ship, you, you, you've really lost control, but you're also at a place where you're so focused on keeping that 2% hit it that now you're 
you're living this facade because you got a mask on and you're pretending, hey, I'm I'm my name is Pete and I got it all together. And if if I don't think I've got it together, I'm gonna show up tomorrow and I'm gonna be even more determined, more driven, more aggressive. And that's where I think modern hyper masculinity or toxic masculinity comes from is because men who don't feel like they're valuable enough are going way over and above to prove to the world that they are good enough or that they are tough enough. And they're bringing out all this just hardness and, and bitterness and anger and jealousy and rage and all this type that these feelings they are feeling. And they're just inserting that into the equation and trying to show up with hyper dominance, thinking that that's going to get them to where they need to be. So men really have to get to a place where they realize it's like, dang, like this ain't working. And why isn't it working? And then like going on a journey, like you said, where now you start to ask these questions, like, what is it? Why, why do I feel this way? And for me, I can help men go right back to, and you're the, you are textbook, a man in their four, five, six, seven, eight year old range. There's a formative years in there where like most of us have had things that weren't massive abuse scandals. They weren't massive negligence scandals, but they were a broken man entered your life, left you with wounds and those wounds just never got healed. All right. We just touched on a few different things. I'm making some notes here. Okay. All right. First thing that I want to touch on is the terms that you use of, of hyperdominance and toxic masculinity. It seems that terms like that have become increasingly prevalent over the past really five to eight years. I, I don't recall hearing toxic masculinity as a term more than a decade ago, for sure. Uh, maybe it existed out there, but but it it wasn't something that was thrown around the way it is today. And I think there's a spectrum here. Yes, there's, if we look at, at masculinity as a whole, on one end of the spectrum, you can have somebody who is, is very weak or maybe espouses some feminine traits. And to be clear, I'm not saying feminine is weak, but they're on the weaker end of the spectrum. And then you have all the way over here onto the toxic end of the spectrum, just aggressive to the end, yelling, just, just very, very dominant styles. And I, for whatever reason, it appears that society today is saying, okay, well, I'm looking at, at the top 5% of most aggressive men, and then I'm extrapolating that out over the majority of the male population and saying, okay, well, all men are toxic because they exhibit certain traits or anything like that. Have you noticed that trend? Yes, 100%. Okay. So where do you think that comes from? What's driving that? Well, and I feel like we could go in a hundred different directions with this conversation because there's just so much depth and breadth to it. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but I am 100% convinced that we live in a modern day where the, let's just talk America right now, American men are under attack, Right. And if you look, the things that wound a man are the, the lack of validation and their, when they, when men disenfranchise themselves with their emotional feelings because they need to get tough and they got to get mean and they got to find success at all costs, they start to, the inside starts to break down and the, now the outside is one way, the inside is another way. And there's a disconnect. It doesn't work with anything. If you, if you disconnect your API you have a broken, you have a problem. If you disc, if you are, if I'm hyper aggressive on the outside, but on the inside, I hate myself and I'm broken inside and I don't know how to f answer that question. I'm a mess. But if you look at, go back to world war one, men got pulled off the war. They, the ones that came back were deeply wounded men with no support, no understanding. The dirty thirties, black Friday hit men's value system of being able to provide for an agrarian society got stripped away and men had to go in search of giving all they had to try to provide for the people they loved the most but they had to die inside to go and work railroads and work mines and work build hoover dam right after that we got pulled into world war ii 
the men that went over there, most of them didn't come home. The ones that did come home were broken men. And then what we did is we, the, our society shifted and we became insurance salesmen. And we take all these men that were agrarian, strong, industrialized men, war veterans, and we stuck them into an, into a carousel or we stuck them into a cubicle and we told them to sell insurance and drive a Chevrolet and buy a refrigerator. And suddenly we told them to wear plaid shirts and dress shirts and we demasculized men. And then if you see the seventies, the whole feminist movement was destroying men for the benefit of women. Well, that was just the pendulum swung too far. And now we have a world of men that don't know what it means to be a man anymore. So you get guys thinking that listening to hip hop and tagging as few, as few as many women on the weekend as possible makes you a man or having a six for income makes you a man or being tough and aggressive makes you a man. So I think there's just all these things that men do that they're compensating for who they are. They're trying to add something to them. So it'd be like Pete plus dot equals success. Sean plus fill in the blank equals success that to me is toxic masculinity because you're compensating for an inadequacy to make yourself feel successful. But I also want to stipulate that women can be hyper masculine too. If you see a dominant, assertive, very aggressive woman, she's very masculine in nature and she's showing masculine tendencies. So I think there's nothing wrong with being a sensitive, quiet, submissive man, as long as you are 100% confident in who you are. But if you're a man or a woman and you are every day compensating for that lack of inner belief and you're trying to fake it to the world that you've got it together and you're willing to do whatever it takes to achieve it, your aggressiveness is is compensating 24-7. And when you compensate, your ego is really manifesting itself to make sure that you're protected from the pain you en endured and you're trying to hide it, you're trying to stuff it away, you're not trying to deal with it. And now you're in a you're in a all out search, in an all out acquisition, a procurement of oh I accumulated this now therefore I feel good. It comes to this instant gratification, and it seems that society has just over the again over the past decade moved more into this realm of instant gratification for everything, and seeking out those dopamine hits has been it's easier now than ever in history and one of the things that i've started focusing on is trying to help more people find their purpose stop scrolling on instagram all day every day social media is is uh, this is another double edged sword where it can be used for good but the algorithms are designed to suck you in and keep you attached to that application and keep you scrolling for those dopamine hits and unfortunately not really accomplishing anything in life. And so it's easy to get sucked in to these apps and not focus on your mission, on your purpose in life, not focus on putting your dent in the universe that takes discipline. And it takes intentionality of a man stepping up and saying, hey, I need to find my purpose in life. I need to become the best version of myself. And no, you're not going to get it scrolling on your phone. It's just, it's not going to happen. And so, you know, I encourage people, men and women, like go try new things, figure out what you like, give it a little bit of time and I had another guest on the show recently where we were talking through the importance of trying new things. And he was talking about how his daughter will, will try something and say, nope, don't like it, and then move on to something else. And I asked him, well, how do you balance that? Because go in and try it for one day. And to be fair, there are some things that you'll go in and say, absolutely not. That is not for me. N not going to happen. Versus going in and, okay, well, that was a little bit different. I'm not sure. Giving it a little bit of time. And then I see, because there is this allure of entrepreneurship out there this day and age, you see all these people on social media that that make it big and building a business. And it's very attractive. People want to go start a business. And so they'll go start a business doing this. 
They'll give it three to four months. Oh, well, this isn't working. I'm going to go do something else. Give that three or four months. Oh, this isn't working. Got to go try something else. So my question to you is similar to my previous guest that we had on the show is how do you find that balance? A man comes to you, maybe he's in his mid thirties, maybe he's married with kids, but doesn't have any sort of mission or purpose in life. He's just sitting in his cubicle, plugging away and doesn't have any sort of motivation or inspiration. How do you help a man through that? That's great. That's a great question. And actually, Tony Robbins has this has a saying that says, success without fulfillment is failure. And he showcases billionaires that reach billionaire status. And when they finish, they, when they cross that line, they looked back and they looked around them and they said, is this all it is? Is this all? It, I did not expect this to be so empty, so worthless. And I think most of us men are searching for whatever we think will achieve that feeling of fulfillment and we get there and suddenly we realize it's empty. And I think it's always, for me, I'm always asking men the question of why are you doing what you're doing? Like you want to change a job, you want to go from VP to C-suite and you're hungry and you're desperate for it, but why? And why, and what's driving you? What's, what's, and what I can typically find is what's driving them is that they really don't feel like there's not a deep love they have for themselves. There's not a deep value system that they have for themselves. Their value system is dependent upon some, some sig significance or success KPI. And I think what you have to help men realize is the strongest man is a man that's like, you know what? I'm good no matter what. Like I'm in love with myself. I love my family. I love my people. I love what I do. And then you start to realize that you're a contributor. Like, I realize like my job in the world is to be a blessing to other people and my job is to invest into other people. And it goes back to the Stephen Covey, the emotional bank account where I have, I don't benefit the world by being a consumer. I benefit the world by being an investor. I invest into corporations. I invest into assets. I invest into lives. I invest into people. That's where value comes from. But if, if I'm a consumer, all I'm doing is taking from someone else and what I'm not doing is finding fulfillment and we're all emotional beings. And if we're not tapped into our emotions, if we don't have any EQ balance in our life and we're driven by IQ, IQ is that hunger, that obsession that is just telling you that it's a pass or a fail. And I think for what I always try to help men do is realize that it's not, it's not the money you have. It's not the car you drive. It's not the physicality that you, that you portray. It's not, it's not anything. It's who you are inside. It's who you are as a being. Because if if we stop the clock right now and we took an analysis of, it's of if I take an analysis of who I am, I need to say, you know what, I'm a great guy. Like I'm a I'm living in my God given body with my God given talents, and right now, I need to enjoy this journey. But if I'm in a world where, you know, even like I like Tom Brady, like he's so obsessed about winning another Super Bowl that he's negated his value to date. Like if you've asked, there's been several interviews where he's like, I'm empty. I need more. I need more. And then he walked away from his family last season and in search of more and more. And it's like, to me, when you see a guy like that, that's willing to sacrifice it all for more value or more validation or more search of who they are, or they need more hits or they need more success. It's a sad place to be because that man is truly learning or they've learned a value system that's telling them, well, when you just get there, suddenly life will be great. But what we're realizing is life isn't a series of plateaus or a series of accomplishments. Life is a journey, which means, you know, I don't know if I'm going to live till tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to live to next year. So that means every moment of today, I need to have extreme value, extreme enjoyment, extreme pleasure in the day because I know I'm the person I need to be and I'm in a place for mentally, emotionally, I'm in a good place where I'm enjoying the journey. But if your life is all about when I get to Las Vegas, then I'll have a great life. Or when I get to DC, then life will be great. What about the journey between live Vegas and DC? Does that mean it was just a big black blur and you just, you just created havoc and chaos to get from A to B? And that's what I always help men realize is there's a question you're asking that you don't realize, which is, 
why am I doing this? Because if I'm doing this in compensation of said in insecurity, well, the why that I have, I don't realize it, but there's no answer to that why. Because if I get the next job, the new car smell wears off in a week and I'm back to who I was. So it's, it's a bottomless pit essentially. So I always help men realize like it's not the job transition you need right now. A job transition will be a benefit, but we got to get you to a place where you really feel value in who you are. And I have men running all sizes of companies in all phases of life, but I'm helping them realize that today is a beautiful day and you're an amazing person and you were created to have an amazing impact. But that means you have to find and get to a place where you love yourself and you realize that the best version of yourself is what will bless the world and will actually give you incredible enjoyment and fulfillment. As you were just talking through that, I was thinking about how I've come across many men that are very successful by most standards in business, but they're not fulfilled. And you always hear this phrase of follow your passion, follow your passion. Last year, I saw, I don't know if it was a podcast or or what the medium was, but Mike Rowe was talking about how that whole phrase of follow your passion is crap. His stance is follow the opportunity and bring your passion with you. And so I've reflected a lot on that. And I think there's something to it because yes, you want to be able to follow that opportunity to be able to create a, a good, stable, happy, healthy life for your family. And the financial aspect is one component of it. But if you start building a business, say you become the CEO of a fairly large company, you start off as an entrepreneur, build it up into something great, but maybe you're not quite passionate about it anymore. Because as we go through these seasons of our lives, sometimes our passions change. I do think it's important for you to have an element of self-awareness where you can pick up on that and say, ooh, hmm, I'm not quite passionate about this and start seeking that out and figuring out a way to bring it in to your world. And that's easier said than done, because if you're running a business, it's not like you always have the opportunity to just step away and go try something new. But it's it's got to be about balance. I think if you recognize that you're empty inside, even though you've created this incredible company or highly successful career that the onus is on you to figure that out so that you can keep moving forward and becoming the best version of yourself. And that's something that I had, again, I struggle with trying to guide people through that aside from, Hey, like trying new things and then expressing and sharing my experiences and what has worked well for me. But I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely something to that. And, and to, go back to the conversation that we were talking about earlier with instant gratification and the the way society is built today is if you don't have that purpose, if you don't have that passion in your life, it's easy to revert back to social media or playing with whatever that you focus on for that instant gratification. Maybe it's video games, maybe it's Netflix, something like that. Yeah. And I think, I think what it all comes down to is I, as a boy and, and you, you kind of said it and I, I kind of wanted to kind of go back to that is when you were a child, the most important thing to you was that your dad looked at you in the eye and said, son, I love you. I'm proud of you. Like you're my boy. And that's what we need. And yet it didn't happen. Dad went away. Dad went somewhere else. Dad was gone. And that answer never got answered. And you grew up wondering, why not? What was wrong with me? And most men don't realize this is like, you're 30, you're 40, you're 50, you're 60. And you're still trying to answer that damn question. And no matter what you do, it doesn't answer itself. And no matter what you acquire, it doesn't fill the hole. And most men have to realize that you have to get to a place where you realize that Daddy couldn't answer that question because he didn't know how. Daddy didn't answer that question because he never got it answered. Daddy couldn't answer that question because 
he was scared, he was broken, he was whatever. But we as men can't continue on and repeat history. We have to stop and we have to be like, I have to get to a place where I am completely in love with who I am. And if I don't, if I'm not proud of myself, if I'm searching for someone to tell me that I'm significant, I have to now get to a place where I feel significant because I know that I'm doing great things. I'm blessing people. I'm being a world changer. I'm investing into lives and I'm investing into things that have kind of eternal return on investments, not things that are superficial and momentary. And for me, and for, for most men, finding, looking for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing is really oftentimes the brokenness, which is just like, well, this wasn't enough. I need something new rather than stopping and being like, Hey, like I tell a lot of my guys, like what happens if you lost all your income? What happens if you lost all your professional significance? What happens if you lost it all? what would matter to you most? And they'd be like, well, my relationships, my family. And that's like, so then why does it go away? Why do those things go away when you're so obsessed about the success? Like if it, if you lost it all, that's, what's most important to you. Like if you lost everything, the pe people most dear to you matter, then, then you start to realize the most important thing to us is being part of a, a community, being part of relationships, being part of realizing that my the only I can change companies, but at the end of the day, someone will forget. No one will care. But if I can change lives, if I can be someone that helps lift other people up, that's what gives me true life and true success and true importance. And then I can go back to that little boy and I can be like, guess what? Maybe daddy didn't answer that question, but now we've answered it because I realize that I don't need daddy to tell me he loves me. I know that I'm loved because I'm helping other people and I know I'm making a difference for other people. And then I can answer that question for myself daily. But when you're looking for, when you're always looking back, being like, how come daddy didn't do this? How come daddy didn't do that? How come he wasn't there? How come he didn't love me? That's a dark place to be because as a child, you don't know any different. As a little boy, you don't want anything other than your dad's approval and your dad's love. And we didn't get it you assume that there was something wrong with you. You never assume as a child that there's something wrong with your dad. But what you do think is there's something wrong with me because if there was nothing wrong with me, he would have said it. But because he didn't say it, he didn't do it, he wasn't there. He must have been disappointed in me. He must have been, maybe he didn't love me because I was a terrible kid. Maybe he didn't love me because I was a disappointment. Maybe he didn't love me because I was a failure. So you grow up with that belief and that becomes the filter that you look at through the world. And when you're a 50 year old man, you still have that filter and nothing has changed. You still see things that way. You still feel that way. You still identify that way, but you just, so much time has passed that you've lost, you've lost the root cause analysis of your life. Yeah. As I've gone through this journey over the past six months, I've had conversations with my mom and she had expressed or shared with me that whenever I was four, that there would be times whenever I would be crying to her asking, why was I not enough? Where is dad? <clears throat> now, I didn't remember that until she mentioned it. And if I'm being honest, I still don't remember that interaction or those interactions with her but I felt it <clears throat> and it's uh, to be able to work through that or recognize that these things happened and we've suppressed them because we didn't want to deal with them or wanted to ignore or pretend that it didn't happen while it can drive you to achieve great things in life at some point to become that best version of yourself, you have to address them. You have to work through them. Whether that's working with someone like you or a therapist or a coach or a mentor or a friend or somebody in your family, but taking the time to check your ego and recognize that we all have emotions, that even though we're men and we have to be strong and provide, that there's deep parts within us that we have to address and we have to work through. And, you know, maybe you can go through your entire life and just suppress it, but it's not the best way. It's not the healthiest way. Mm -hmm.
No, I was gonna say that's that's exactly it. Is there's a lot of people that got to the finish line, but when they look back, they didn't have the impact they wanted. They didn't have the satisfaction they wanted. They didn't have the legacy. They didn't leave the legacy they wanted. And I think if if I can learn from what I went through, and if I can give other men successful tips so that they can find more success tomorrow, like more fulfillment tomorrow then we can stop repeating brokenness and we can stop repeating the unwanted parts of history. Whereas if we continue to repeat things using, like it says saying, if I do things over and over again, expecting different results, you know, that's where manifest the brokenness. And I think if you see the mass confusion in society and that, and I don't want to go too long, but there's a quote, there's actually statistics that came out and I've and I had it on my uh, LinkedIn. If men, if anyone wants to go check it out, but the fatherless home epidemic in America is twenty five percent, and that's higher than any other nation in the country or in the world. Asian countries are four percent. European countries is seven percent. Russia, I think, is eighteen nineteen percent. America is at twenty five percent. And the direct correlation between fatherless homes, absentee men, is a direct correlation to promiscuity drug, alcohol addictions, abortions, brokenness, the degradation of society. So this, this is what I'm saying. This conversation can go longer, but men have to realize if they don't get it right, they are going to be part of this societal breakdown because they didn't change. They didn't get better. What they did is they perpetuated. And right now the fatherless epidemic, the absentee father, the absentee men epidemic in America is destroying society. It is. And I think that it's fair to say that we could consume an entire show on that topic itself, but it is a very real problem that I'm starting to pick up on. And I think fatherless homes have, have been a challenge for, for decades, but it seems that this trend is going in in a not ideal direction and there's more and more data and studies showing the adverse effects on society on individuals on children and what happens and that's a that's definitely a very real issue and challenge that we as society and we as men have to start figuring out and you know what i'm not going to put it all on men because i think women play their part in it as well i've seen some recent statistics where 80 percent of divorces are initiated by women or 70 percent are initiated by women and 80 percent of them are initiated by women with college education and so it's not all on the men it it takes two parties and i think it's become increasingly easy for people to just throw in the towel instead of putting in the work to keep the family together, to keep the relationship together, because there's always just, oh, the grass is greener, the grass is greener. There's always someone else or just a swipe away on on your phone now. And I, I see people that are focused on raising awareness of this issue and challenging conventional thought today of, hey, maybe we go back to some traditional values. We can look at society. We can look at the impact on children. There's study after study that shows the importance of having your your traditional family unit. And it's it's something that needs to be addressed. I'm just very concerned about the direction that society is heading. And it's primarily Western societies from what I can see. Obviously, I don't have visibility into everything around the world, but it does seem to be more prevalent in, in Western societies, which based on the stats that you just cited seems to align. Okay. All right. So what is something that you have learned over the years in regards to this topic? I know I always ask you this whenever we start wrapping things up as far as what is something that you'd like to share with the audience, but... This is a big one. And Pete, I'm be honest, I feel like the other shows that you and I have done together were truly just leading up to this one because there's clearly a reason why you and I have connected and been drawn to one another. And whenever I was in Arizona, we were able to meet up and go 
hiking on Camelback Mountain. I'm still disappointed in myself and the audio not working out right, but that's just one of those things. We just rolled with it. So on this topic, if you had one piece of advice for men or young men on how to work through this, what would that be? Wow, that's a good one. I think it, I think we touched on it, which is it ain't your job. It ain't your money. It ain't your wife. It ain't your circumstances that defines you. It's you that needs to find definement by going back to realize that you were created to be an amazing person with an amazing impact. You, you have all the skill sets but you have to achieve a belief system in who you are and you have to realize that you need to be the best version of yourself. And then all those situations you'll find yourself in will be blessed by that, but you'll never find a life that's enriched. If you're looking for those circumstances to add to your value, like your value is like, I always tell my guys, I'm like, you're a 10 out of 10. Let's just like we, I have brokenness. I have insecurity. There's things that are flawed. I maybe have physical issues. Maybe I have mental issues, but I, I truly believe that I was created to be on earth and my creator wanted me to make a difference. So he, he made me this way so that I would be capable of blessing the next person. He didn't make me to be a nine to five desk jockey that would use that to empower people. Like it's like, my value is who I am when the lights are off and I don't have a job. I don't have money. What is my value that needs to be maximized. And then whatever you apply yourself to will be further benefited. And you have to get to a place where you realize like, I'm an amazing guy. I can have not, I'm not faking. I'm an amazing guy, but I truly feel amazing. I I know that if I can make people smile every day, if I can make people feel confident every day, if I can help all my employees rise higher every day, that gives me value. And what I make financially, what I achieve vocationally, that's just icing on the cake. But you got to get the cake right. Very well put. You got to get the cake right before you put the icing on. Oh, man. Well, Pete, this was probably one of the most challenging episodes that, that I've recorded. And... I appreciate you more than you know, as far as the the subtle little nudges, encouraging, hey, when are we going to do this? Hey, when are we going to do this? And I'm guessing you could sense my hesitation and probably knew the why behind it. But thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done to help me. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for raising awareness of this topic, because it's something that I don't think a lot of people or enough people truly focus on. Okay. How do people contact you? (laughs) Um, People can contact me at, uh, I got a website, triumphperformanceacademy.com or follow me on LinkedIn. But if I can, if I can help anyone really find fulfillment in life, that's, that's, that makes my day. That makes my, that makes me realize why I went through it, what I did and how it's made me a better person. Let me ask you something. If I were to put on some sort of event where a group of men come together, speakers, and just kind of, whether it's a workshop or maybe we go hiking and then just have some, some time together, would you want to be a part of that? Absolutely. Okay. No questions asked. All right. Okay. I've been thinking about it, toying around with that idea, trying to figure out how to put something like that together. I've got some pretty big stuff in the works in the coming months, which I'll share with you and I'll share with the rest of the viewers and listeners when the time is right. But Pete, thank you again for coming on the show. For the rest of you watching, that is all we have for the episode today. I'll make sure that we have all of Pete's contact info in the show notes. We'll be pushing some of this content out on social media, on LinkedIn, and other platforms. That is all we have. Thank you so much, and y'all have a good one. 